I mean, I can't go. get in right now. Oh, okay. Oh, let me, hold on a second. Let me. It's not because I'm fat, just because there's no room. Oh, and I'm fat. <laughs> All right. I, well, I forgot about that box being back there, too. That's not doing anybody any favors. I didn't see that. Man, our internet was not at work today, but I got a ton of news in before this. I, was, is a, I wanted, to, wanted to mention it's a Dreamcatcher article that I didn't get the link up. So you might want to link that up to, Shoot. or just look at it at least. I forgot to update all of our stuff too. Hmm. Um, hey, I saw this today. 600 bucks? Yeah. Are you shitting me? Yeah. People are throwing down. I haven't even announced cash. it to like a family. My mom, my mom was like, "I want to put money in." My Teresa's mom, all these people, which I was like, "Well, I don't have to do that." Okay, this is not Boat Stream Crazy Cars Three. This is Amigos Live. I'm gonna hit the fucking water. By the way, you watch and see. Oh well, I have complete faith in you. I've dropped about fourteen or fifteen already, and if, if I can drop ten a month, I'll be at that seventy right there. Mm -hmm. So I just got to drop a little bit more. I haven't even started to really, I haven't drank any water. I mean, you know, like usually you guzzle it. <laughs> you I mean, no more unusual. And I haven't done any work it out. Or I haven't done any like running or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've already lost this much. So. I'm feel I'm in the flow now. Although it does get me sometimes. All right. Teresa's been easier to put up with too. If you're recently, so that's helped. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, booze. We're going to get some for us today. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, we're, we're on. We're on. We're always we're on, on, yo. Thank God I got here a half hour early. <laughs> Just sat around for a half hour hey, like a jackass. That's that's my favorite thing to do. We're going to open his as, a, as the we're gonna, uh, after show. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to do a separate video uh, for that. Insert this too. This thing literally weighs probably 25 pounds. Graham is, he's too giving. He's too giving. Hey, Lorenzo, don't, stack. Don't let me walk out of here without that. I okay, can, you got to tell me what that is too. Do you want to tell me now, or do you want to tell me later? Yeah, it's that project. It's that DOS project I've been working on. Oh, okay. There's almost a hundred DOS games ready to go. Awesome. They'll run from any drive, even off a USB drive, and they, and it works great. It works great. I'm going to start adding some Amiga games. I've put some on there, like Blood Money, and some of the Amiga games that you wouldn't expect that were on the PC. Mm -hmm. So you can laugh at the PC version. Point. <laughs> Look at that. Look. Like you should hear the sound on Blood Money because it doesn't have any, doesn't have ad lib or anything. So it's like, it's not good. Go ahead and broadcast to the world that we're. I had a hell of a week this week. That's what you were saying. They had. <clears throat> I went out Monday on a real long run. And they're Tuesday. And so, because I got caught out last Friday on a real, real long run. So sure. Now, when you say a long run, this, these are always these like are trips when, to These are when jails, an right? broke down or screwed up mm -hmm. somewhere. So Wednesday, I'm like, man, I'm glad I got my work done for the week. I get a call Wednesday. The, the instrument in freaking uh, Bourbon County has gone down. Mm -hmm. uh, and last week, I had to go to Clark County, which is, it's they're both right near Lexington. Bourbon's actually further away than Lexington. It's a long drive so and i had to sit in these both these prisons i had to sit inside of them for a couple of hours getting all this stuff back in order that doesn't sound fun no it's not i could tell you some tales so wednesday i drove all and i got the call at like it was like eleven thirty. so that meant I, I i knew i would be late getting home i didn't get home till almost seven o'clock on, on on wednesday and then i was like thursday i'm like thank god that i've got a day to sit down here and Another phone call. I got to go drive out to freaking uh, Vanceburg and hang out in that prison for a while. Man. And by the way, the one, the uh, uh, the one I went out last week, they turned off the power strip. That's why it was down. <laughs> then the one, I, the one I went to in Paris, the printer had broke in it, which was a stupid. Is and, this is this like when it goes out at Walmart and they just got to replace the little strip of tape? Yeah. And then the one I went out yesterday to uh, Vanceburg. They had gotten real screwed up readings. Well, it's because this thing's right beside a holding cell. And they'd been cleaning out the holding cell with a bunch of disinfectants and stuff. And that's, you can't do that. Mm. Instrument has to be away from all that stuff. So they tried to run stuff on it. The first test they've ran in months. It was an like, officer, he's doing a recertification on it. Wasn't even a, you know, a, a perp. Horrible. So all three of these were idiotic things I had to go just attend wait, to. And you basically just walk in there, flip the switch, and then go back and go back out? Look at me. Yeah, that's a good well, look. Well, that's going to be the picture? No. Me covering my audio. face. 
Uh, uh, but yeah, it was, <coughs> it was god awful. God awful week. And then today, uh, they're like, my boss called. He's like, listen, I've got to give you guys evaluations next week. And so me and Greg both have to go out and do jobs Monday. So Tuesday, I've got to drive to Frankfurt, which is well past Lexington, to get evaluated. And oh, by the way, since our uh, the person that, that overlooks our signatures in these papers, these lawyers, this notary, she's sick. So we had to get all of our stuff notarized in Frankfurt. So we had to get all of our paperwork ready to go. 20, 26 reports, mm. which each take uh, forever and get those things. So we got to take all that out there next week. So I, I, next week, I'm already booked. for the, It's going to be a long week, man. It's tough. It's tough being a working man, but... I wouldn't know anything about it. I should have went into school teaching. Yeah, that's that's what you should have done. Can you imagine? You ready to dawn? Ready we're to gonna dawn wear the these. Well, we're just gonna wear them for the beginning. Are we just? Are we ready to go? <laughs> Let me get my the phone ready. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not cough directly into the microphone. <clears throat> also, don't cough at me. Okay. Hi, fellers. Hey, Necronom, Edvin, Duncan. It's crazy. I've met Edvin Helen in real life. I know. I saw all the Isn't pictures. It was glorious. What's he like? And tell me the truth. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's much shorter than I expected. That's not what you told me before we came on the air. No. I was expecting, I told the guys this too. Yeah. I was expecting Figgy to be like a tiny guy. Yeah. And I was expecting Edvin to be huge. Because mm-hmm. Figgy, I mean, you think Figgy, you don't That's true. Um, I would think that. Figgy looks like Rob Gronkowski. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's huge. Kind of uh, a dumb look on his face? No. Oh. No. Figgy's very intelligent. Um, well, because Gronkowski, you know. Yeah, well. But he's a beast, you know. He's a monster, he is a beast, man. yeah. Um, Paul Harrington also met him. Paul saved my bacon at the end of the, the trip. I'll tell you all about that on the show. Yeah, I'm sure you've got a lot of yeah. reminiscing and whatnot. To... So we'll, we'll we'll do we'll do our intro, and uh, let's see. Can I... I? Yeah, you can't wear these with glasses. No oh way. yeah, you can. You can. Hold on a second. I got to get all my ducks in a row here. Ne- uh, Neville, stay tuned and find out. Find out soon. Okay. Crazy course. Who was, who was the guy, who's the contributor that's Duncan. playing these? Okay, because he should put his name on these. Duncan, you Duncan, right put your name on your videos. Take credit. Because when I put these up, I'm like, this is another one of our fine v- viewers. I don't know who the heck's doing this stuff. By the way, that other Amigathon video, you can release at your leisure. The one that There's one ready to go. It's up right now on the... It's unreleased. It's up there. Okay. Yeah. Just an FYI. I didn't know if you were waiting for me to release it here. So I thought I'd just let yeah, you. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have released it otherwise. Okay. Um, okay. We talked about that. We talked about that. And you're going to talk about you're going to talk about the videos and stuff you posted. So we won't talk about that. Uh, I don't think we talked. Yeah, we haven't talked about the last Amigathon video. So we'll start there. And you you can just talk about all the videos you put up, okay? So here's the, here I'll, I'll give you a rundown, okay? Yeah. Um, we're gonna do uh, Amigo just Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager update, just the, all the people that have contributed since last episode. Right. Um, then we're gonna do um, uh, Amiga Ireland. I'm gonna give you this, uh, just a recap of the trip. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we'll do the news. Mm-hmm. Then we'll go to the game, mm-hmm. then we'll do the Discord reviews, and then we'll do uh, and we'll do Patreon. So nothing has changed except for the Ireland port. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to... What do you think? It looks great. You look a lot better than I do. Well, yeah. That's always true. Um, so I need to hover I can't this see thing. anything. Yeah, I need to hover this thing right over <laughs> that button, because once I put... Once the glasses come off, there's no more seeing. Okay. And by the way, I have, I have not seen the picture of everybody at the after party wearing these. So if anybody in the chat can link me up with that, maybe I could put that on the uh, on the thing there. Okay, right, mine's not going to stay on for long. Okay, well yeah, we'll 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 make it we'll make it easy and short. You're actually going <laughs> to. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Let me just one more time. This is our bit. We're doing a bit. I told you Eep loves the bits on ARG, right? Thank God. Good for her. 
Did you watch the? I put, I, you know, at the, I don't know if you noticed it, but on that Amiga thought, I put that bit we filmed for my. I did. I didn't see that. I was like, because I, I didn't have it. I, you know, when you, you took the mic that I use mm-hmm. in, indoors. And so I was like, you know, I can't really do. I was going to do a bit right there on the in my room. I want to get that back, by the way. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me know when you're ready. I'll be here. I mean, that's... Come on. Come on. That was awesome. I like how you even tying these things. I tied it in a bow. Are you kidding me? My head's more bulbous than yours, clearly. You know, they used to say W.C. Fields had a nose like a gin blossom. I've heard that, yeah. Is your head like a gin blossom? Well, I'm... (laughs) I think he drank a lot of gin. Oh, probably I thought that was like a, I guess gin's on a plant. Here, tie. Can, can you tie this? Plant. Not with my mask on. Okay, hold on. Can you drape it around your ears and so <laughs> It's too big. See, I thought that was initially that's what the plan was. So here, don't worry. I'll I'll get this. I'm gonna. Yeah, pre-tie it. That's right. Thank God my hands are eating up. That makes it. <laughs> this one's when I wash. It's always been known for your nimble fingers. This is this is what when you wash the dishes. Near me. How's your kitchen renovation going? <laughs> There's no kitchen res- renovation. What a stupid question. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I that's, uh, that's next up on the, in the dock. No, today. it's not. Do I look like I'm making kitchen renovation money to you? You look like you could probably go to <sighs> those HGTV shows. Not to mention, I don't get to go into kitchen no more. That's true. That's true. How's that? All right. It looks great. All right, I'm ready. Okay, I want to make sure I'm still lined up. All right, here we go. Let me make sure it's actually rolling now. Okay. What a what a geek! Okay. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John, and I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about my exploits at Amiga Ireland. Oh! And we're also going to be talking about Crazy Cars Three. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but right now, Aaron, the first thing that I need to do is tell you about the Zool mask I'm wearing right now, and you're wearing. Yes. At the Amiga Ireland after party. Uh, Erla, the founder of Amiga Ireland, him and his wife spent days and weeks cutting out these Zool masks, and they handed them out to all the participants for a big group photo. And wow. And I skillfully took two, after asking permission, and uh, brought them back. Uh, Painfully for, honest. Yeah, for you and me to wear in this opening segment. However... The time has come to uh, undawn the Zool mask because I can no longer see anything. You know, in Mexico, if you were to remove your mask voluntarily, you'd be ostracized from the luchador community. Has anyone ever done that before, removed their mask voluntarily? Yes. Mm. And they were ostracized from the luchador so community. you know this from experience. Well, yeah. Not your own experience. So now when I take this off, I can no longer be a luchador. I'll never be. Or a non-ant from the nth dimension. That's true. You'll always be a luchador non-ant in my heart. Thank you. You know, Aaron, before we get into uh, the Amiga Ireland trip, yeah, um, I want to give you a quick update on Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager. All because right. Because you don't see the emails come in because the emails come to me. I don't want to see them. Um, they Make me too in, nervous. They've come in fast and furious. Um, and uh, I want to uh, give a shout out to Simon Rose, Lobsterminator X, and Ben Granville for throwing down some pledges for your uh, the, the wager. Right now, over six hundred dollars has been pledged uh, with, uh, and that's not even counting all the incentives. Lots of people are saying, and if he keeps it off, I'm going to pledge three times the amount. Oh, geez, no so, pressure, yeah. no pressure. So, um, again, uh, if you're interested uh, in Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager, this is where he is planning to lose one hundred pounds for the Children's Miracle Network uh, by Amigathon in July. You can send me an email with Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager in the subject line. The email address is amigos at amigospodcast.com. So you know you know all the addresses and everything. Not fumbling around like an idiot like me. <laughs> I'm just here to drop the pounds. I do nothing else. I will say I will lose 100 pounds by Amigathon. By God, or I'll pay. Don't think I won't pay. I believe it. I believe it. So, Aaron, I want to tell you a little about, about a trip I went on. Please. Uh, one week ago today. Unbelievable. I was it? within the cozy environs of Athlone, Ireland. Beautiful. I left the uh, picturesque 
uh, airport over at Charleston. Uh, the airport with uh, one terminal and five desks. Any issue getting out of there? You know, the great thing about flying out of Charleston is that they don't care. They just put you on the plane. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so uh, there was no line. Walk straight through onto the plane. Um, flew to Philadelphia. Had a transfer in Philadelphia. I know you don't like Philadelphia, so we won't we won't dwell. I don't on hate that. Philadelphia. Um, and then it was on to Ireland. Uh, it was a seven hour flight. Uh, That's not bad. Ninety nine percent of which I was dead knocked out asleep with Ambien. That's how that's how you do it. I will never travel again without Ambien unless I'm driving. Probably not advised. If I'm mm, not on a indeed. Trip. But, uh, but did you have any trouble waking up when you no, got there? I woke up and I was ready to rock and roll. Oh, I jolted okay. out of that airplane seat, went over to where I was supposed to catch the bus. Had some local people help me with that because yeah. it was it was a new and different system. Plus, I'm just not used to bus culture, you know. And also, also dumbness. Yeah, also dumbness. Took the, the bus ride was great. I mean, it, it's it's January, but Ireland was still ultra green. You know, all the fields there were sheep in the fields. It, the video looked lovely. Yeah, yeah, it was very bucolic. And uh, and so r- arrived at the bus station, and who is there to meet me? Um, I don't know. None other than the man himself, Paul Harrington. Paul H. Paul Harrington was yes. there to take me to the hotel. Great guy. He'd rented a car. For the occasion. Wow. And uh, and drove me to the hotel. That was awful nice. That was. Paul went on to become a local legend that weekend. He didn't did. It? Yeah. He, he won. He won the contest. There was a homebrew C64 game. You know, there was even though they, you know, Amiga, uh, Amiga Ireland, it's all Amiga. There were some C64s hanging around. Gotta have them. Yeah, They're yeah. like the little the kid brothers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And he won the. I think it was called. It's not Tower Toppler because that's the 7800 game, but it was something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway. Uh, Friday night, uh, there were a couple couple talks that uh, I was I was happy to live stream out, um, and uh, it was just a lot of socialization. You know, this was the most social retro gaming event I've ever been to. Uh, a lot of the the larger events, like I went to Classic Gaming Expo, it's a lot of people just kind of huddled in there. They come with friends and they only talk to their friends. Yeah. Uh, this uh, a big Ireland was held in a. a relatively small space so you couldn't help just bumping into people and because it was only centered around the one thing you knew that you had something to talk to somebody else about yeah um i ran the gambit of people you know we were talking before the show uh, or before i left about how many people would actually know what amigos was and it was definitely the wide variety of people that were like hey i love your show blah blah blah, blah. then there was like oh yeah i've heard of you guys and then there was just the blank stare of incomprehensibility so uh, they had heard the show and had never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys still around? Uh, right, exactly. But uh, I want to, you know, give shout outs to all of the the people that uh, you know that helped uh, bring me there. Um, if you if you watch the video I put up on YouTube, all the all those fine folks, but especially you know Paul, Figgy, Edvin, Pixels, and Ravi. You know, those are those are our, our fine folks on the Discord. Uh, they they were they were my stalwart companions the the whole weekend. Um, but I also talked to I talked to a Greek guy. His name was Klerkos, mm. and he did the Light Wave 3D uh, talk. He I was, watched that. He actually, was a, he was a real yeah. cool guy. Met a guy from uh, called John from Ireland. Um, I uh, accidentally hit. I, I banged my head on a sign, and he said, "Careful now, John." And it sounded just like a guy from Father Ted. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" It was Dougal. It was. I, I wanted to say, "You're doing the thing. You're doing the thing," and I love it. But I knew that that would be weird, so I didn't. I didn't do it. Um, but uh, it was. It was a fantastic week. And we went to the castle. There's a castle in Athlone. We we summited the castle. I love it. Yeah. Uh, we we looked abroad. Um, we went to a couple great pubs. Uh, we heard some. We heard some traditional Irish music. I heard it. It was um, the video. It was great. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. So it was. A, it was a fantastic, fantastic experience. If you're at all interested, check out my video that I posted on YouTube, uh, where I sort of give a rundown of everything that we did. But I'll also be continuing to release uh, talks, presentations, and interviews that I did during Amiga Ireland, including one with the founder Erla. Uh, I would not uh, try to pronounce his last name because I don't want to mess it up. But I know that Erla is his first name. And uh, it's like ride or Rida. Anyway, well, um, you should have tried. Yeah, You're right. Tried. Um, I talked to Ravi, you know, from the Retro Hour. Um, and so, uh, one of my biggest regrets, however, was that I spent half an hour talking to Mike, the uh, head uh, designer of uh, Amiga Forever. You, that's a regret. <laughs> 
You said, what, what about... What are you saying about Amiga Forever? No, you said, what about biggest regrets? It's like I talked to Dan for a half hour. Would, would you like to tell me the... I'd like to tell the rest of the story. Oh, I'm sorry. It just struck me as funny. So, the reason why I regret it is because uh, after a half an hour, I, I hit the stop button. I tell him goodbye. I go back to review it. No audio. That is a bummer. No audio. Well, maybe we can, maybe we can talk to him. He's yeah. A, we like those guys over there. Yeah. Yeah. It was... It was but, you know, I just want to thank... Everybody for being so nice to me. I'm just this this hillbilly from West Virginia, and you're you welcome me with open arms. I, I hope to return one day with you in tow. Uh, the the amigos will will take Amiga Ireland at some point in the future. So it, it looked like a lot of fun. I ask you a couple questions okay. before we close out. Number one, now this I'm just gonna ask this because I watched the video. This video of you riding the bus, you're going across the plains. Mm -hmm. Was the grass? And the plains and the hillside really, really green, or was that just my mind playing? It looked super. It was super. It looked like green. a whole different color of green, it and we see a lot green. of green here. Yeah, yeah, it was super green, and I was surprised because it's January, but there was no like. It, it, it seemed very lush. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It looked incredibly lush. Yeah. And and you say they uh, you had a uh, hundred plus people at this mm -hmm. in any in any given moment in this room, uh, and uh, to me it looked like everyone had a good time and and we're having a lot of fun. It was very, it was very, uh, it it was very gratifying, and it made me, it got me fired up. I have to say for some more Amiga action. So well, I'll was, tell you, it, it definitely inspired me to investigate uh, the the Amiga hardware more when I saw all those machines you yes, know, set up. Yes, and I saw just you know how cool it was to be able to run stuff off original hardware. Um, you know, you brought the six hundred back over tonight. So I'm gonna be He's hooking, back in, uh, folks. I'm going to be hooking that bad He's boy back up. He's back in. And uh, as soon as my PAL monitor arrives, which I've also purchased, <laughs> so I've kind of got off the deep end this week in terms of... You made of, the right call yeah. there. But, um, but yeah. And, of course, um, uh, the I couldn't go to Ireland without bringing you a couple couple trinkets back. Oh, okay, okay man. So yeah. The first one is an official Amiga Ireland oh, shirt. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that. I can even wear that. For now, hopefully I'll grow out of it the wrong way. Look at that. Oh, look, it's got something on the back here, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Boat. Yeah. So, Isn't that nice? Uh, and... I love it. Uh, as you might or might not know, uh, the one and only Chris Full has provided us with uh, booze money since he couldn't make it. So I bought I bought a couple rounds for the boys, mm -hmm. but I had a little money left over. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how about a little something for old A? Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I drink up booze. A nice uh, Irish cream. Oh yes, tremendous! Yeah. I love that stuff. Do you like Irish cream? I do, oh, I do, good. I do. Well, I will pour you some. Oh, all right, man. Thank you. So this is Ryan. You mean Irish you brought this cream. all the way from Ireland? I, I bought it at Smoker Friendly uh. Taste Valley. <laughs> Bam! Illusion blown. <laughs> Still, but it's imported. I never turned down. Free booze. Imported Irish whiskey is in here. It says right there on the. Smells label. good too. So, yeah. This also this stuff's a great mixer. Oh, yeah. You ever make rattlesnakes oh, yeah. or anything with no, these? No, what's a rattlesnake? It's a layered drink that has a uh, uh, chocolate liqueur and Kahlua, some other stuff in mm. it. Very tasty. Mmm, that's the most sugar I've had in a week, right there. <laughs> yeah. Woo! You don't, you don't have too many of these, or the way man, that's the week that is over. super tasty. Man, you got to keep that away from me. Don't let me take that home. <laughs> Um, oh, and my other uh, my other regret that uh, they're talking about in the chat right now. I really wanted to get an authentic uh, UK style kebab. It's just, yeah, you know, it's just yeah, kebab. yeah, yeah. I remember y'all talking about that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we drank so much booze, so much beer that my stomach was just eternally full all the time. Yeah, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't pack it in. How was the uh, local the local brew there? Well, you know, it's Guinness. Yeah. And Guinness in Ireland tastes better. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they use a different, different tequila water. in Mexico is exact yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, boy, it, it was so good. And watching the guys pour the pints, it's not like here where you have your slub pouring. Them. These guys knew what they were doing. You know, they were pouring some out, adding some in, setting it over to wait for a little bit, pouring some more in. I mean, these guys were. Awesome. You just ostracized the entire bartending community <laughs> in Hurricane with that statement. I am not affiliated with Boat. Everyone That's else, true. I love my local bartenders. I was going to say, the, you, you, uh, the coal miner in, what was that place you went to see the, uh, the midget? Guess wrestling? what? The midgets were back this week. Wednesday night, I couldn't go. Ah. They were back at the coal miner's lounge, yeah. Mm. I want to go with you next time. All right. Keep me in the loop. I don't know if you'd make it in there, Boat. That's probably You're too pretty for the coal miner's pretty. lounge. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's move on, Aaron. Uh, what's new this week in 
Gun, gun, gun. Gun, 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 gun. The gamble train's rolling in. It's time for this week's Amiga News. All right, Amiga News time. Straight up. So, uh, we're going to skip the R stuff, which we contributed a bunch, and we'll skip your little interviews. We'll come back and you can talk about those. So, um, let's talk about this one came, popped up on uh, Indie Retro News. Everyone's favorite. Mm -hmm. Remember a while back, there was a game that popped out, a homebrew game called Elfie the Unicorn. I do not remember that. At I all. do. Okay. Because I remember thinking, what an what an amusing little uh, name is this it like is. Elf bowling? No. No. Do you know they in Washington State just this very day they have I think it was Washington State they have outlawed elf bowling. No, they have outlawed dwarf tossing. Mm. I couldn't believe that. It's a real shame. Have you ever seen dwarf tradition. tossing? No. They put on the and listen. I got all Isn't the. Isn't that sort of like what goes on at the coal miners' lounge? It is. I've got all the respect in the in the world for it. the diminutive people, whatever you want to call them. In wrestling, they've always been midgets, but you know they're you know whatever you call them. But in there was this weird tradition in the seventies, and it probably dates back called dwarf tossing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, a small person would put on this suit with handles on it. Mm -hmm. And these, pe these big thugs would come up and they'd toss these oh, guys. Okay. Sort of like an and airplane it, spin. And it, no, I mean, just grab them by the handles and, just go, oh, okay. and whip them. And, it, and there would be mats. You, you wouldn't just throw these guys into a wall or off a mm -hmm. cliff. And they'd land and you'd, and you'd measure the distance. That was dwarf tossing. Uh, and there was also dwarf bowling as well. So that's pretty obvious. Same thing. Well, uh, and, and it's not like we, they went out and kidnapped dwarves and then threw them. These were, they capitulated and they were, they were involved and they were, they were part of they the sport. Were, yeah, right, right. Well, it's been outlawed and I think it was Washington State today, banned, I, which I, I never thought it would take an act to ban it. That's true. So now I guess all the dwarf tossing done there will be underground. Oh, it's a real How shame. do we get on this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Elfie. That's what it was. Oh. <laughs> Elfie the Unicorn. So what, 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 I still don't understand how you made that connection between Elf and the Unicorn. You said something about dwarves. dwarves, and it got me it's going. about Elf bowling. Well, I'm just saying. So um, anyway, they have re retrofitted this game with a kid mode. Mm. Make it easier. So well, I will need that. Free game for the kids. It looks like a kid's game, doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. all colorful with the unicorns and it's a cute little, little game. So go check that out whenever, whenever you get a chance. Next on the docket uh, boat, uh, we all know... Uh, uh, that every month or two we get one of these beer multiplaying compilations, and here's another one. Uh, this one is uh, like based on like uh, sort of like board games and stuff, the more intellectual version. This is a uh, uh, this is strategy RPGs. It's Iraq. Enough Iraq, said. Yeah. Uh, I looked over the list of what's in here just to just to go over a couple things. Both the Archons, love them. You know, I love those. Dino Blasters in here, which we covered. History Line is in here, we covered that. Lemmings, North and South, Settlers. So, Star Control. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So, Worms. So, if you are uh, have a CD32 and you're living in, you are living in the glorious time for the 32, you should go grab this immediately. Is this, uh, now, this is Iraq. This is not Amiga J, right? This is not Amiga J. Do you think they fight? Do you think I think they're probably buddies. Mm, probably so. There's not room for fighting. Do you think, why would they fight? Computer. You know, who's got the better compilation disc well, coming out this Well, I don't month. know about that. So, um, I thought this was interesting. And this is our good pals over at the Guru Meditation. They did a live D-Paint demo. Gutsy. Ooh. Gutsy to do it. You know, I've got a, uh, a little bit of trivia for our, from our fan, uh, Amiga Bill. Did you know that he was the uh, cinematographer on the new Netflix Ted Bundy uh, documentary that's no. just come out? No, I didn't know that. So I don't know if uh, if you or Teresa are into the true crime scene. She, uh, I dip my toe in that pool of case. I mean, it's kind of depressing, so it I don't is, watch it that it much. Is. Yeah. But anyway, and Ted I, Bundy, particularly yeah, nasty yeah. fellow. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, Guru Meditation. What are they doing? Live deep paint. Live deep paint demo now. Uh, one of the things that you ha uh, either have put up or will be putting up is the, well, I guess so, will be is the uh, light wave. We were talking about that demo. I don't know if that's part of your uh, what you're well, going to put My together. favorite part was when I uh, interviewed Pixel Vixen, a uh, renowned uh, artist, and I said, "So you're you're in digital paint, right?" And and I, I can't even think of the correct name of the program. So uh -huh. that, that shows you how much. That's I don't okay, Boat. Listen, you ran the trivia contest. Yeah. If you'd asked me five years ago, if you were, I would I would have laughed heartily. So. Listen, you know this is going to be good. It's got the guy that is the cinematographer for Netflix doing it. Enough said. Yeah, yeah. What are we cinematographer for? Home movies? <laughs> I don't even know if we'd go that far. You know, so enough said. Uh, now, most of the rest, and uh, we should talk about Dreamcatcher. I, Dreamcatcher released a new article, uh, which I don't have the uh, title to yet because 
Uh, we didn't have any internet today mm. when I saw it pop. So uh, check over and you want to have a look real yeah, quick and see what it is. Everythingamiga.com. They're always gold. Always gold. Bide to the bone. <laughs> That's it. Any, what is this about? Let's have a look here. Storm Lord. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I haven't read it. I will. Definitely. Now, Storm Lord looks like a, a movie tie-in. Is this a... Uh, no, I don't know. Okay. I haven't read the article. So, you're not familiar with a film called Storm Lord? I'm not, no. Okay. okay. I don't know. But uh, go check this out. This ga- this actually has... Uh, this game has a lot of uh, fans. Uh, so, you know, and you can tell there's a lot of mostly naked fairies in true, it. True, true. That's, that's, that's how you lure them in. That's how I, that, that gets me on board right there. I'm definitely going to read that article. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we uh, stuck up this week. And we'll come, we'll do your uh, Ireland stuff here at the very end. Um, so uh, I have uh, both yelled at me, and luckily I found. Uh, more Amigathon footage <laughs> on a stored on a remote drive in a remote part of my room, and so we have put up hour twelve of Amigathon 2018. Uh, this hour includes Super Frog, uh, Gods, yes. and Killer Bees, yeah. and also there's a hilarious uh, opening segment. So I didn't film a host segment, so <laughs> uh, you will you may not find it hilarious. Um, moving along. Uh, Today's game was played uh, several times this week on the channel. And this one, I guess, did you say Duncan did this yeah, one? Duncan style. Duncan played the heck out of this yeah. game and, and stuck it up on the uh, on the net there. And I think that you also had a go at it, didn't you, Bo? Yeah, so I, I streamed it live yeah. for about an hour, and yeah, so, uh, it was a fun time. So there are a couple ways. If you want to see uh, this week's game getting, uh, getting played out, you can go check it out. Um, let's talk about ARG Presents. Uh, this week, uh, me and the Brent, and thanks to the Brent for filling in last week for Boat. Absolutely. Best he could. He did a he great did his job. Best. He, he did his best. He ham and egged it. Let's, 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 let's call a spade a spade. Uh, but uh, uh, this week, uh, it was an interesting episode because we did games really close to our hearts. We did uh, MMOs. Uh, Brent uh, did uh, Star Wars Galaxies, and I did City of Heroes. Uh, two MMOs we played. Uh, these are the first two games we've ever played on the show that you can't just go out and play, unfortunately. You have to just kind of watch us play them. Uh, man, this coming week's show is going to be a real humdinger. I mean, if you want to see a train wreck, <laughs> this may be the show for you. As me and Brent tackle a machine we didn't know exist and we can't pronounce the name of. <laughs> it's the Sam Coupe. The Sam Coop. The Sam Cope. I don't know. I guarantee it's not the third. I hope it's the coupe. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Coupe? Who knows? And I tried to figure out what that means. No one's for sure. It's a two-door sedan. I t- <laughs> no, they, that that's, could, that's a theory. That yeah. that was not, But I mean, who knows? We're doing the Sam Coop, y'all. It's a shame that they didn't give it a good name, like the FM Towns Marty. Hey, listen. What do you... Oh, <laughs> how dare you? Um... Let me see if there's anything else that we put up. So, Bo, why don't you... You want to run over something? I just... I could talk about it, and you can just take it from where I say it. So, um... We've got uh, boat, the boat of car trivia challenge. Yeah, here. I'll just go ahead and take over. From yeah, go ahead. On the screen. So, uh, just a couple of the things that I put up so far. There's tons more coming too, so stay tuned. But uh, I, I uh, we've got the orientation from Amiga Ireland, which was also a, kind of a mini podcast because they talk about the the news and what's going on in the world of Amiga. Um, I have a chat with Pixel Vixen. Uh, she's a uh, D-Paint artist who does tutorials and stuff on YouTube and also the winner of the Amiga Trivia Challenge. Uh, speaking of the Amiga Trivia Challenge, it is presented here in full um, uh, with uh, two rounds with the winners and everything, and uh, it was a lot of fun. People, um, you know, I was talking to Pixels about it, and he, uh, I, I made the questions easier than they were originally presented, but people still had trouble with them, so. Yeah, I will say, I, I listened to this, I watched this live, and I... No one will ever know, but I did exceedingly well at these questions. I just want to let you, you know. Next year, I was surprised. Ireland, you'll take home the crown. I was surprised. I thought I would. I would just get murdered, and I knew most of them, so I felt pretty good about myself. Um, I've also put up uh, the retro hours. Oh no, baby, yeah, I put that up yesterday. The retro hour did a show live from me Ireland. I put that up. You got to meet Dan. And I Robbie, got to I know Robbie. Yeah, obviously, I, I ate lunch with Dan on Saturday. He's a real, real nice guy. Oh yeah, he's got a good voice. Yeah, he? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, and there's a lot more. I still haven't put up the mod competition. That was a whole lot of fun uh, watching the trackers and everything. Yeah, and, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I, so I see that one. Much more to come from Amiga Ireland footage. Uh, but uh, and enjoy what's up there. Yeah. Uh, well, that's it. 
All right. Well, let's move on Roll to this on, week's brother. game, which is Crazy Cars 3. It's crazy. So Crazy Cars 3 was uh, chosen for us by the Amigos Game Selection Committee uh, over on the Discord. Uh, this was, I believe, a Chris Folds pick. A uh, Chris Folds joint. Yeah. You know, um, when I heard this game announced, uh, I was not, I was uh, trepidatious because it's the third of something. And also, the name doesn't exactly instill confidence. Right out of the gate, I was like, oh boy, this sounds like it could be a dud. <laughs> so, uh, Crazy Cars 3 uh, released in 92 uh, on two discs. Now, we'll get to this later, but the Crazy Cars 3 had one player, okay? Uh, now, this was published by Titus, and this is one of those games where the developer isn't listed, so, but it's pretty much Understood. thought that it was developed in-house. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, guy that coded it was named Richard Hooper, and the artist on it was uh, an, an assistant coder or full-time coder, or whatever, was Gene Michael Masson. Um, Titus is one of those outfits you don't think about much, but they did a lot of games uh, for the uh, Amiga. But the games, I looked over the games list, they did like uh, a ton of games for it, but, you know, listen to some of these titles, all right? Okay. Battlestorm. You ever heard of that? No. Blues Brothers. I think you yes, played that. played that. What would you think of that one? Terrible. Yeah. And what about the second one? They did that one, too. Did not play the second one. Uh, Brainies. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that Dick bell. Tracy. Okay. You, I, I didn't think that was very good. I, thought was, I don't know. I only played the NES version. F40, which I haven't played, but Prehistoric, I have played. Remember, we, I think that we I played think we did that, that on, on Amigathon. Amigathon. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. And then Titan. So I'd say of all these games... Uh, prehistoric would be my favorite. Now, uh, so when I looked at what they'd done and who was doing this, that didn't instill me with confidence either when I played this game. I was like, oh boy, I don't know about this. Um, so anyway, this this game had a lot of ports, which was surprising to me. Now get this boat. Uh, they had an Amstrad port. There was an Atari ST port. I, no one knows for sure which system this originated on. My guess is probably the, it was either the ST or the Amiga, I would say. Um, the C64 and DOS also got ports of this, which is, I thought was kind of interesting. DOS. Uh, and I looked for it. I couldn't find it because I was going to give it a shot. And this is on a bunch of compilations. Uh, of course, this is Crazy Cars 3. I looked at Crazy Cars 1 and 2. Did you have a look at those at all? No, but I've heard they're, they're much, much worse than this. They're game. not good. Uh, they're not good. And that didn't instill confidence with me either because I'd played Crazy Cars. I didn't like it. I never played Crazy Cars 2, but I looked at it. So what do you do in Crazy Cars? Now, this game... <laughs> I want to just read this. I, I got this. For, I'm going to read this verbatim from the manual <laughs> because after playing the game, you would never have gotten this. Now, now are you going to talk about later what this game was later released? Yes, as I am. I'll get to that. So, now listen to this. This is just a short blurb here. Saturday night races. Oh, whoop, wrong one. Hold that thought. See what you think. Uh, let me find this here. Of course, that's the one thing I didn't find. So basically, what this says is, your guy wants to come over here. Here it is. Okay. You've just arrived in the United States with your heart set on becoming a millionaire. It's every immigrant's dream. Right? As, your, as your only skill, this is your only skill, advanced race car training. Yes. You decide to enter the Saturday Night Races tournament of illegal challenges. Okay. Hey. And, now, wait. <laughs> Better start breaking the law right No, hold away. on a second. As chance would have it, now this is lucky break here. As chance would have it, you run into an old friend down on his luck. Mm. In order to recoup some of his lost wealth, he sell you. He sells you his prized Lamborghini Diablo <laughs> at a rock bottom price. Now I can tell you that when my when my ancestors came over from the old world, this was almost exactly what happened to us. This next line's great. This uses up all but a few thousand dollars of your life saving. <laughs> this poor guy. He's got just enough money to buy one of the world's most expensive cars and still have several thousand dollars left over. <laughs> it seems like He's maybe, not going to make it in the States. Maybe like, maybe entering the world of illegal car racing is, is not something he should have done with all this money. Yeah. So, when I read that, I was just... <laughs> I thought, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. So, but that is a good setup for this game. So, you come into the game, you get to pick between three different people. You can play as Joe, Sly, or Val, Okay. Uh, and I don't think it matters. And then, so you 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 uh, start the game. Now you can in the, the menu you can choose training or you can or you just play the game. Mm -hmm. Championship, that's what it's called. So you are then shown a map of the U.S. and there are different spots on the map, and each one of these spots are a different 
illegal Saturday night street race that yeah. you go on in your Lamborghini Diablo. Can you imagine? <laughs> would you take that thing on American Street anywhere? So, in the in these races, you've got like you know like a 1972 Ford Escort, you know a 1981 Chevy Citation, and a, you know a 1992 Lamborghini Diablo. You know, can you imagine? I can see why West Virginia didn't have, get a, a place on the map because we don't have a road that you could drive one of these things down before you right. bottomed it out. So once you and you've got a certain set of money, you uh, 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 you know it's not a set of money; it's a it's an amount a of lot money. A lot of money is what you're yeah, about. thousands of dollars. Yeah. And so you pick a race that you could afford because there's an entry fee. Okay, so once you pick your race, and I believe the first one I tried was like Denver, uh, was or was a cheap one. There was another one, and then once you do that, then you go to the betting screen. Mm, yes. Not every race has the betting screen, but if there's a lot of big players, at the, there are races in this that are just nameless locals. I was going to say, did you run into races where there wasn't a betting screen? There is. Okay. And that's because there were no known named racers mm. in that area. Then you, there are other areas where you only have one or two named races, but the first place I go always has all, it's like three named races in you. And you all bet on winning, okay? You, and you, you put your money down. And then they'll, once you all bet, then some people, so there's always a jerk, it's like, I'm going to raise the bet. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. by the time this thing's, these, if you play along, well, you're in for a, a, you don't have to raise your bet, but you look like a wimp. That's right. And then you start the race. So you've bet, on, t on top of the winnings, You've got you can win this money if you win the race, okay, and then you're off. So uh, each of these different areas have a different uh, geographical uh, screen set up. Uh, like if you're if you're in the mountains, you're in the mountains. There's some that are in the meadows. There's some that's in the cities. There's desert. There's uh, also uh, to their credit, there's weather effects, which I thought was surprising. And so you take off, and th and the best way to describe this game is sort of like uh, it reminded me a little bit of like. Uh, like a Lotus 3, maybe. Remember we always thought Lotus 2 looked better than the third one? And this one sort of looked like is a step down from the third yeah, one. Yeah, I would put this more in the Jaguar H. It H is somewhere in between yeah. those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you on that. And so you take off. Now, you get choices as to how you want your car to go. You can, you can, you can, and I did enjoy this. I was happy that they had, you can use the button or going up, which I always use the button. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can... You can sort of shift your car, or you can it automatically shift your car. You know, that's car. one of the things that we just don't get in America is up for acceleration. You know, yeah. we never we never got well, it. Well, there are some games where I can do it, but I, if I have the choice, I'd really just have a button to do it. Because yeah. also, I don't want to hold up. It hurts my hand. Mm -hmm. And then you take off, and you're in a race. It's your standard racing-style game uh, where you are the view is from behind the car, and you're going through traffic, and then you're also passing other racers. Uh, you, you have to try to get number one. The racetracks are, they're not laps, it's just like one long track. And uh, you, and you, there's a position uh, bar at the top tells you where you're at. Which is odd because we just played a game without laps. It, last uh, week, I, I, I was just thinking that myself. Yeah. It is really strange. <clears throat> um, there's not a whole lot to the controls of this. Like I said, it's clearly a joystick and button. There are a couple keyboard controls. Um, if you hit return, uh, you will, or actually I, I thought it was space bar. But the instructions to return. Anyway, you'll get your turn. On oh, mine, I hit the space bar and I got the I boost. don't know what version you were playing, but it's enter. Was it? Okay. Uh, and um, you also, now I never did this because I didn't know about it until I printed out some of the docs. If you hit N, you turn on your night vision glasses. Did you ever try that? No. I, you know, I saw that in the manual. Yeah. I immediately I, forgot about it. Yeah, I saw That's where I saw it. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, anyway, on the main screen is a thing that lists how much boost you've got, which is turbo boost and score, how much damage your car's gotten as a... If you bought it, there's a radar detector. There's some stuff you can buy, some add-ons yeah. that will show up in well, that here, screen. Uh, no, know, go ahead. You, you know, the thing about the shop is, like, the radar detector is, like, 1500 bucks. Everything really else is expensive. nine gazillion dollars. Yeah. So I was never able to be good enough to really spend a lot of time. In well, school. I cheated. Mm. And so I got... I, I played... Move. I played dumb guy style, then I played <coughs> millionaire Lamborghini owner style, you know, or whatever the guy yeah. that comes over. If from, you're just throwing down thousands, then you, know, you get right in. Um, so you're on the road, you're racing these guys. Um, the uh, it's I would say it's a. Uh, I found the racing to be pr pretty good, pretty smooth. It is not as good as Lotus Two, which is the benchmark. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a firm. It's somewhere in the ballpark of, like I said, it's a step down from the third one and a step up from Lamborghini in terms of the way it scrolls. I found it to be a pretty smooth scroll. Now, one thing I want to say right away, and I, I mentioned this on Discord straight away, I was terrible at this game. Terrible. 
and I could not figure out how anyone could win. Well, then I played the emulated version, mm. and I was like, oh, this is one of those games that if you play it on an NTSC Amiga, it's like uh, Warp Lightning Factor fast, 10. Yeah. It was so quick, I couldn't do anything. Because right. I would play on the... I went back and played it on Amiga Forever, and mm-hmm. would, I was winning races yeah. left and right like a stud. That's another reason why about that, you know, that garbage 500 that we have, I just couldn't do anything uh, with. We just stop calling it that. <laughs> but... Uh, um, so this is one that you need, and I could not find an NTSC version, so that doesn't mean there isn't one, but I didn't have it. Uh, so I had to play this. I actually played it a lot on the Amiga just to see if I could somehow get good enough to win. No. no. But I, I could just finish in the top five or six on that, but I mean, it was a lot more running off the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also like Lotus in the fact that when you run off the road or you run into something, your car just sort of hops up yeah. in the air. And I enjoy that. I don't like pole position style games where your car is immediately destroyed and you got to wait. Well, I, like I, I don't mind the outrun at version where you just sort of flip over and it's sort of hilarious but in a game like this the one thing about this game is when you um when you have a problem like or get caught behind something where i mean you lose a lot of positions mm-hmm. i thought i found the computer to be a formidable po- uh, opponent yeah now could i win a race sure and i i, I did pretty well uh, uh, all things considered but uh, there was plenty of races where I would run off the road and and get slowed down, or somebody just would, you know, every once in a while a couple cars get in front of you and you just can't get around them, and you, you know, they'll they'll smoke you. And there's no catching them a lot of times. Mm-hmm. They're gone. It's right. late in the race. Uh, there's a distance bar at the top that runs from right to left, and as it goes down, that means you're coming closer to the end of the race. Mm-hmm. And then w- when you get real close to the end, uh, 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 numbers will pop up on the screen and start rolling down real quick how many meters, like it is, of what you're from the finish line. Uh, which I, I thought that was a good way to do it. Uh, what did you think about the overall racing gameplay? You know, I thought the racing was okay. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I played Jaguar HJ, XJ220, um, and I would put that in this pretty neck and neck. Um, I think there are some things that the Jaguar does a little bit better. I, I thought that the, the turning, you know, even when I was doing well, I still found it to be a little bit squirrely. Um, it's nowhere close to Lotus 2. I mean, Lotus 2 is still the gold standard for control. It, it controls the way I think it should control. Uh, however, um, I really enjoyed the fact that, you know, you just, you always keep going. You never stop in this game. And mm-hmm. that, that made, that, that forgave a lot of the ills. Um, I thought that the way that they, they did the racing, where it's a, it's a race with tons of cars, but you have rivals within each race that you're trying to beat to win the bet. I thought that was a cool angle. And that wasn't something that I'd seen before. It, it that part of it was like, I've noticed that the rivals are, 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 are always near the front when yeah. you have named rivals, mm-hmm. uh, and so they're they're not the each. I mean, it's a challenge. Like I said, uh, uh, of course you uh, you can uh, you can augment your car if you get the money uh, with uh, better tires, uh, better engine, yeah. more that's, boost. That's my big complaint about this game is that even after winning five or six races. Um, I still didn't have enough money to buy item one in the store other than the radar detector, which I found was useless because I never once got stopped by the police. Well, the police, did, but you did encounter them. I encountered them, but I just boosted right on mine. I liked, I thought, the, uh, that's something else that I will say was a hassle, was using the boost. This is the same old story. Now, yeah. this game did, believe it or not, it, this game had a, uh, uh, you can play this game or, or a facsimile of this game on the CD32, which I didn't try, and I wondered if they had, put that boost on the stick. That would have helped because it's yeah. another game where you have to let go of the, you have to hit the button. and that's, Very inconvenient. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's the limitation of the, of, of the system. Uh, but you could get tires. I'm looking here, so it looks like the reason we didn't get the night vision, it's something you get in Division 1, which I didn't get that oh, far. Yeah. Uh, and I never got to the point where I really needed night vision. Uh, but you, as you as you go through the game, you, you earn money. And when you get enough money, you can go for like the divisional challenge. Did you ever try the divisional challenge? I never made enough money. Okay, I did. Before. And the divisional challenge is you're on a road and there's a time limit. You have to finish the that stretch of road in this certain amount of time. And when you do, you get to graduate to the next division. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but the gimmick is that you're not racing on this thing yet. You're racing at the clock, but the the uh, the road is full of semi trucks, and you've got to kind of dodge around. Uh, I never actually got past the first division. I could, I could never. I, I mean, I came literally within seconds of getting there, but I, I on my best run. Uh, but even with a jacked up car, it was, pr- it was pretty difficult. I mean, but I mean, this is a game. I'm pretty sure I could get better at if I got to play it a lot longer. I mean, and I will say this, and I, Lotus Two again, gold standard. But this is amongst the top 
tier g racing games oh, sure. on the on the machine. And I'll say that uh, knowing that there are a lot of good ones. And you know, I thought that the the color palette was very interesting in this game. Yeah, it's it's sort of a uh, sort of a uh, burnt orange. Uh, you know, different different shades, kind of a muted color palette. Uh, which is, is is not always my first choice, but I thought suited this game really well that it's sort of post-apocalyptic. Seemed post-apocalyptic, even though I guess it's not really, but everybody dresses crazy. Um, I thought that one of the cool things about it was that they gave your opponents sort of, in, not really a personality, but they showed your opponents, you know, Al Capone or whatever. Yeah. That was cool. And um, the opponents are wacky. There were some yeah. real wacky ones. Yeah. yeah. So it's, real, it's a real colorful game in, in lots of senses. Well, I like, I like the betting system. <coughs> I thought that was fun. Uh, I like. So, I mean, it's an. It's really. It, it, I like games that tack stuff on that really don't affect the. I mean, the game engine doesn't change. It's just something fun, mm -hmm. you know. That I, and I like that to it. And what it reminded me of was the tournament mode of One Must Fall. It's a very similar thing where you and they give and sometimes the guys all show up. It's you know just crazy guys. And then you know there's there the picture, but it's still fun. Yeah, it gives the game some personality. That's right. I'm like you. I thought there was a lot of varied tracks. I thought they were interesting. There's tunnels and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like that part of it's very yeah. lotus like. And I, I enjoyed the fact that there weren't laps. I mean, you, you I'm see the same way. The track has to offer, and then you're done. I don't want to go back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I don't have. I don't. I kind of. Like, and that's something that's real unusual. I mean, I, it's weird we had two of these because I can't think of too many games that do it like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I kind of like it to be honest with you. Again, it's a, a out an outrun style thing where you go through one thing. You know, once. Right. The, the choices are great. I didn't get to see every track, but I saw a good chunk of them, and it was fun. I like fun. the way that they present you with choices at the beginning, I too. love it. Yeah. I love it. And it's, some of it's sort of pseudo-choices until you earn the money, but still, it's, it's, I like that. I thought that was really cool. And it gives you um, it gives you a plan. Like, you're like, okay, well, I can race here and here, but then once I do these two races, I'll have enough money to go here. And you know that you know if you go to one of the more northern places, it's going to be snow or something like that. So, um I'm always a fan of any time there's a, a game gives you choice from the get-go on what you want to do. Yeah, I'm, I agree with that. Plus, you can finish dead last in some of these events, and if you've got the money, you're not going to be boned. You're, until you're broke, flat broke, mm -hmm. you've got options. Right. So that, Which is nice. Now, uh, I want to touch on the police that show up. Now, every once in a while, you will see a cop either waiting on you or coming up on you. Okay, which is cool. I love that aspect too. Kind of like test drive, right? That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, and of course, they want to get you. So sometimes the, the, the cops actually will run like a speed trap, and then sometimes they'll, they'll come after you. So, what's neat is, and, and the docs say that sometimes you'll go past a point and they'll have ca radar cameras. I don't. Who knows? I don't. I don't remember seeing yeah. one. So, and the, when the police are on you, uh, they're they're on you, and so you could actually stop. And when the cops pull you over, it ends the race, you to, and you'll have to pay money. They can also catch you or disable your car, and then you have to go to jail, and you have to pay money. Or you can just blow past them. Mm -hmm. That's when the boost really kicks in, is and just you blow cops and blow the doors off those guys if you've right. got boost. But of course, boost costs money, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't have any, you know. So, but you I, get one to start with, and I can never afford another one because I guess it was fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, well, you you got to have that. You got to make that big money. Uh, so <laughs> that that's the way it goes. Um, just while we're on the subject, before I move on to the sort of the next game, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Titus. We talked about it earlier now because they're they're a French company. They were anyway. I don't know how much you remember about these guys, but actually this was one of their bigger games. I put out a list of all the games they did just to see what they did. They ended up going bankrupt, uh, uh, and I think it was two thousand five. Uh, so they went belly up, and which is which is a shame because they were actually around for quite a while. And they did a ton of games for the Game Boy. They did games on the, all the big consoles. I mean, they were around for a while, uh, including uh, games that I've heard of. Uh, they actually published a ton of stuff too, and they didn't develop, including stuff like Worms. You know, they and I remember Xeno on the C sixty or on the N sixty four. But one of the games they did, and this probably didn't do them any favors. They were the they were the outfit responsible for the N sixty four. The uh, uh, notorious N64 Superman, if you'll recall that, if you don't, if you know anything about bad games, that's one of the classics. It's considered one of the all-time worst games, right, right. and so so they, their track record spotty is spotty at best. They also did Jimmy White's Cue Ball World. Hey, Ooh, you got that going for yeah. you. I noticed. So one of the games they did, and and this, I don't know how you stumbled upon this. Did you, uh, when you, the American Lamborghini Challenge? How did you come across this information? Did you uh, just from just from when I went to stream this game? Yeah. Uh, it didn't show up. YouTube lets you choose what game you, they, they they categorize it in. Right. And you can type it in and it auto completes. When I typed in Crazy Cards, Lamborghini Challenge popped up. Right. So 
that's the funny thing about this game. So what does this game not have that um, Lotus has? What well, Lotus has multiplayer, right? Uh, and so uh, this didn't, but they wanted it, I guess, or they were working on it, or they decided to add it. And so what you've got then was the American Lamborghini Challenge game, which was a separate release, uh, and it was released, I guess, as a, as a new game. Uh, but it, and I played it. Did you actually play it at no, all? I played, played it. it, and it is, it is exactly the same as this, as far as I can tell, with, with the exception of a two-player option. I will say the Lamborghini American Challenge is a much better name than Crazy Cars Three. It, 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 it yeah. And so, uh, the difference is, that, like I said, you can play two player. Now, I did not get to play two players at all, but I played one player extensively, and it's. I mean, I could not tell any difference. It played exactly like Crazy Cars Three. Uh, I did read some stuff on the on the uh, multiplayer, and the multiplayer it sounds like it had some issues. Mm. I heard that if if one player's lagging way behind, the only the uh, the other player can only go to like the fifth place. They can actually advance in the race because the other guy's so far behind. So there is some sort of rubber banding going on. Well, here yeah, but that's just... with the that's with the uh, um, two player version. You're literally rubber banding with the other player. Right. right. Horrible. <laughs> that's that's horrible. <laughs> uh, something else I read is that. Uh, there's some uh, discrepancies with how money is spent in the shop between one player and the other. Mm. Also, some people will report that one one player that was easier than the second player, maybe one was harder, really, or That's ran smoother. So that it had some issues. Mm. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but it did, you know, it got released on some stuff, and I believe there's even a Super Nintendo version of it. Now, what I found interesting, and I'm going to try this as soon as I can. They actually made a sequel to that, and it was on the N64. It was only released in Europe or Japan. It wasn't released in the States. Uh, but it was called Automobile Lamborghini. Mm. And it was supposed to be, it was the, so technically, if you look at it the right way, there is a sequel to this on the N64. Automobile Lamborghini. You're going to have to check that out on the EverDrive. I will. I will. I don't know if I've got it, but I'll, if I don't, I'll, I'll locate it. Uh, but it's, I like the idea that they'd added two players to this, but it is kind of a bummer that they didn't really iron it out, yeah. uh, as, as it were. Yeah. Uh, again, they also released a, C60, or a, a CD32 version of this. Everything I read said there were, like, I thought, hey, maybe it's AGA, or but everything I read, and someone can hold me up and tell me I'm wrong if, it's, if I am, I, that there was no change in it at all. Like, they didn't AGA it up, or they just basically surprise, dumped it over. Surprise. I know. I know you love to rag on the CD32 boat, but... And they were, hey, it wasn't out that long. People were just trying to get in and get out without spending a bunch of cash, but it's the way it is. These guys, they were, their hands were tied. They were their tied. Were so, uh, where do I place this in my pantheon of racing games? I would put this as we, I, 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 like, uh, I like Lotus 2 the best. I think Lotus 3 is second best. Then this, then your, uh, what was the other one you said? The, uh, 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 Jaguar. The Jaguar game, which is, the, I think this gets a better racing engine than Jag, mm -hmm. uh, myself. And I'm, I'm guessing you probably feel about the same way I yeah. do on that, yeah. Um, you got anything to add? Nope. Okay, I looked this up on eBay. This thing is really tough to find. Uh, I was surprised. I only saw one currently listed on eBay, and it was in Italy, and it was 22 uh, bucks. Now, some had sold recently in Germany and the U.K., and they were going cheap, you know, 15, 10, 8, you know, something like that. They weren't expensive. These are complete in-box copies? Yeah. Um, just the magazine reviews of this, and I know you've got your side of that. Um, Lemon gave uh, this game 7.98, a good score. They also, now, just for fun, I looked up to see what the Lamborghini American Challenge was getting. 7.84, so slightly lower, mm -hmm. but you know how that goes. And the CD32 version, though, it's 7.45. It's a disappointment. Uh, Amiga Action gave it an 89%, Amiga Computing an 85%, Amiga Format a 93%, Amiga Power 88%, and the 1 gave it a 90 So, those are pretty good scores. I mean, your B-plus scores, I don't know if I'd go that high, I, but I mean, I think it's a solid B title. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is another one of those crazy ones. It does look, I mean, it's when you look at the characters in it, it almost does feel like they were going for some kind of like, Post-modern or post I know. It's yeah, it's like they wanted to make a post-apocalyptic game, but they didn't actually put anything in it other than the color scheme. Yeah, and also just the fact that the, the guys look, and even the guys you can pick from, they look they don't look like just normal racing no, guys. No. Like when you play Need for Speed or something, yeah. they look like racing right. guys. These guys all have stories to tell. You know, so these guys look more like a post-apocalyptic-y. Mm -hmm. So 
anyway, uh, do I recommend it? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. Would I play it again? Yes. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Let's see what our uh, Discord community had to mm. say. These are our user reviews from our, our Discord community, all of the fine folks that support us on Patreon. Uh, Graham Vebke says, uh, once you get over it's part of the Crazy Car series, it's actually a very capable racing game, mm. which is up there with the likes of Lotus 2 and Jaguar XJ220. The game plays well, has smooth autumn tone graphics. I like that. Autumn tone. Autumn tone. Man, he should write for like a, uh, a catalog. I know. Uh, an animation and introduces some in-game mechanics still used by driving games today. Chris Fold says Crazy Cars 3 is an often overlooked and needed classic. It rivals Lotus 2 and XJ220 in all areas and has numerous in invocative features. Not sure if you meant innovative there or invocative. Uh, Paul Harrington says Crazy Cars 3 was probably one of the few Amiga games I completed without cheats or trainers. I believe him. A challenging and addictive game with cops, division challenges, and a cool jet engine turbo. 9 out of 10. Duncan Styles writes, My Crazy Car 3 thoughts, well, only the sluggish controls and collisions seeking rival cars let down a great racing game. Looks great, fast, and with features that elevate it above the average racer. 8 out of 10. You want to take the next couple, Aaron? Yes, and then I've got one thing to add that I forgot. Matthew Perron. Uh, great overlooked racing game with an awesome sense of speed and beautiful scenery. There's a lot of races, and being able to wager on some of them adds to the excitement. Eight bowling balls out of ten bowling balls because of the lack of in-game music, and that just nailed it. Yeah. This yeah. game has some menu music, but there is no in-game tunes. It's a, it's that like, is a killer. It's the it's Lotus a, Disease. It's the, I can't believe it took me this long to remember it. Thank yeah. you, man. That is a ridiculous oversight. Mm -hmm. Inexcusable. That Absolutely. takes it down a notch. Because when you're racing, you want... You don't want nothing. You know, I want sound effects I want plus something. the music. Yeah. That's a fail on mm -hmm. that. It's inexcusable. Bark Bit. A fast-paced, fun racer in the style of Lotus, only hampered by the sluggish handling of the stock car. Careful choosing of races and upgrades are key to success. 7 out of 10, I agree. Pixels at Dawn. A high-quality racer on the Amiga with an interesting championship mode. Doesn't beat Lotus for gameplay, but is streaks ahead of its predecessors. Let down by a lack of multiplayer until it was re-released as a Lamborghini American Challenge. Yes, I agree. Uh... Chakotay, is that the way you pronounce it? Okay. I never, I always, I've read his name and I never actually said it. Uh, a racer that was fun and entertaining but needs more gears to save me from that high pitch whine. <laughs> Another reason to have good right. music. What I learned, I should neither gamble nor race for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, but not least, the level lord. Mm. If anyone's going to know, he's the lord of all levels. Never played Crazy Cars 3 before, but I like both the graphics and music. Which were just above the ordinary. That's what we're going for here. Playability, just above ordinary. Playability is okay, while S, uh, special effects, sound effects being a horrible mess. What did I say? Special effects. Thank you. Screeching sound, which represents the hump, bu the burning tires. That's true. Made my ears bleed. <laughs> and any collision with the scenery caused the car to jump as high as a mad goat dashing in the air. A mad goat. <laughs> I should play. I should play more before revealing my opinion. But I expect. More from the game, uh, but I expect more from a game made in 1992. Yeah. All valid points, and I agree with pretty much all those. Yeah, so thank you guys for submitting your uh, reviews over on our, our Discord channel. Aaron, last week, the Patreon song. It was two weeks ago. Yeah, because last week, we just me and Brent just sort of talked about the Patreon. I heard it. I heard it. I, I know you, I, you. You were you. Lo, you were so I happy. Was, I was expecting you to sing. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear. You know. I was hoping you and Aaron would do a maybe a maybe a meatloaf paradise by the dashboard light duet. He would have been the, the woman. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, two weeks ago, it was actually a two in one uh, song. I started out with "When Irish Eyes Are Smiling." Yeah. And then I ended up with. It's funny here because I put ODB. And uh, that and it's that's a, that's a rapper. I know I know who that is. <laughs> so that that tickles me that I read that now. You know, um, I'm, I'm so, so no one accosted you with a shillelagh so, upon your entry to the country. No, okay. no, old Danny boy was oh, the yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Paul Harrington, uh, a Northern Irish native, uh, Edvin Helen, Daring Coles, and Tech Cowboy. Ooh, I'll get that right. The Tech, Tech Cowboy. Cowboy, like a Star Spangled Rodeo. Yeah. Um. So uh, this week. If you know this week's uh, Patreon song challenge, please send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. So here we go. 
Counting virtual sheep, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Tim Drew, Dan Will Williams, Robert Edgerton, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Letter, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Larimore, Andy Craig, Sean's O'Darren, Lomax, Colin419, Bachbit, Roland Book, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, and John Cook, Dan Ross, Leaf, Kellon, Alan Kabak, Chicote, Level on John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy CTZ, The Slow Nora, Step on Swoggard Mortensen, Evan Helen, Blendo 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vepke, Bryn Dowd, Elaine Denson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis, Tapes from the Crib, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Homerstein, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, Kjolbjorn Barman. I got no idea. If that list gets any longer, you got to do a small opera every week. Oh boy, you'd love that. Oh you? man, I'm out of here if that happens. <laughs> All right, Aaron, next week on Amigos, we are going to be taking a look at a sports title. It's been a while since we've done a sports game. I can't remember the show. last time. Yeah. We're going to take a look at Advantage. Tennis. Oh yeah, boy, tennis! For us by our lovely Patreon community, the uh, Amigos Game Selection Committee. I want to thank all the fine folks in the chat right now that have come to listen to us live. I want to pity them after hearing that. Pixels at Dawn, Henrik Anderson, Edvin Helen, Martin B, Neville Overman, uh, Necronom, Anthony Jarvis. Uh, maybe that's it this week. There's tons of people in the chat. If you are in the chat, you need to make yourself known so uh thank you so much we record the show every week on fridays sometimes we start a little earlier like today sometimes we most of the time we start around 5 30 p.m eastern u.s time so uh we'd love to have you around uh thank you guys for listening and we will see you next week until then adios, adios. all right i think neville's a good name neville's i always like that oh sorry gary graham I missed all, all the John books. is here. Yeah, as soon as you hear me start talking about the uh, YouTube chat, chime in so I get your name on there. The chat was fast and furious today, so I couldn't scroll all the way to the top. You ready to do some Amigos mailbag? Did you hear that uh, Brent's wife is a... <laughs> Terry, yeah. yeah. I can mm -hmm. believe that. Yeah. Did you hear him talk about that last week? She yeah. said she listened to the show, man. She sits around listening to the show. I couldn't believe that. That's I, that's bizarre. Teresa doesn't sit around and listen to the show. I don't know, but she might, man. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You never know. She probably loves what he is. How are you guys doing today? Now, like I can see the chat room for once. I made it nice and big for you. Hi, everybody. I need to get a knife or something. Hey guys, I'm starting a local com classic computer club. Mm. I was inspired by the, uh, thank you, John. I was inspired by the Ireland video, and so I am going to, uh, I'm going to go for it. I don't know what, I don't know, uh, yeah, Boat hasn't went back to full screen, and I'm not going to touch his setup upon pain of death. I love the snow effect in this. That's a pretty good game. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. Duncan did a great job, too. I mean, he's still he's still playing. This is his playthrough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like time. right now he's playing he's live. Playing right now. All right. Is it goodie time? All it's right, guys. Time. We're going to open a box. That was tasty. Thank you for the booze. I'll just leave that here. All right, I can't take sure? that home. Well, no, I would love to take it home, but I'm not supposed to be drinking that. That's true. That's true. I've really laid off the booze, too, since I started the uh, Amigo Aaron's Weight Loss Wager. i got to save every calorie. Have been made.
Dude, I haven't had chocolate or anything greasy for like three weeks. It's brutal. And yeah, I, 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 ate, I ate greasy crap the day I weighed in. So yeah, it's a, it was a tough call. Oh, well, get ready. Get ready, Graham. Tina is going to, she's going to see your package. So, hello, folks. Well, that probably sounded, that sounded real bad. Uh, hello, folks. <laughs> Poor um, Bo. Poor sick Bo. Do you want me to take the opening? Yeah, yeah. why don't you take the opening? Hold on a second. Let's start it over again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Oh, Wait. <laughs> We're going to open a package. Bo, what do you got for us here? I have a very voluminous cardboard box here. Voluminous. Man, I've seen, I've heard a lot of 10 and 15 cent words tonight on the show. Something tells me the Europeans have a, a, a more broad and That's true. more they, intricate vocabulary than we got. expanded my vocabulary. Is that what happened? Era, especially those Norwegian fellas. Because before you, you just used to communicate with a series of grunts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh. All right. So this comes to us from Australia, as you can tell from the target.com slash or dot au on the thing. Now, normally I open these packages ahead of time and remove the cash, but in this case... <laughs> that um, would explain a lot. <laughs> you know, one of these days that we're gonna open one of these things up and, and like uh, uh, a dingo or something's gonna pop out. That would be fantastic. I would love to have my own dingo. You ever heard that, that old joke, the dingo ate your baby? That no, actually happened. That. A dingo I, yeah, took a baby. It was, it was, it a, was it famous. Was a newspaper headline. I yeah. was listening to the radio today and talking about it. So it's like, that really takes away a lot of the funniness to it. It does, it. it does. I wouldn't want a dingo anywhere near I'm not sure what I know. Dingoes are like crazy little dogs, yeah, aren't they? Oh, look at that dogs. old guy. It looks like the Australian Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> So this is the Sunday Telegraph in full form. Oh, a man. Full Give me that. The Sunday you, don't get the, you don't get a look at okay. that. That's for daddy. Look at that, guys. All right, I meant to say this. This comes to us from Graham Vebke, all the way from Australia. Yes, you can tell. Yeah. I see some fur in there. There could be a dingo <laughs> in there. And, of course, it wouldn't be a package from Graham if it wasn't for the minties. Oh, my little boy will be so happy yep. when I get home. Yep, there you go. I told Graham, I was like, my kid ate these like they were going out of style. I think what I'm going to do is move this to the floor. Minties. He'll be so happy because he just he finished these off a while back. And I was like, well, kid, I can't get you no more. So All thank you, Graham. All right. And here is, look at this guy. This is a, uh, oh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you call this thing? It's a, uh, it looks like a, a Mr. T and a penguin had a kid. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Mr. T bird. <laughs> that right there is money. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I want to see this on Eep's next show. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll add that. Oh, now, it's down. Here's something that we've never had before. These are Vegemite flavored. Oh. Uh, Arnett's. It's, the name of this snack is just called Shapes. It sounds like it. <laughs> Vegemite Shapes with cheese. You know, I was reading our Discord, I believe it was, and they were talking. Now, you guys uh, that are in there that were involved in this conversation, and maybe you saw it. Were they talking about some sort of Vegemite-based beer? Yes. Did I read that? Yes, that is a, that's a thing. I talked to my buddy at work about that, and we decided that that's the most hideous thing we've ever heard. <laughs> Vegemite-based beer. By the way, this bird is called a kookaburra. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a there's a song. You ever sing the kookaburra? Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. And then sometimes, sometimes I start singing a different song called Arkansas Traveler over top of it because I don't really understand how the kookaburra song goes. I think but you just make anyway, both those up. Um, this is uh, the iconic flavors of Vegemite and cheese baked in a shapes biscuit. You can't get a more Aussie snack. Are you going to eat one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to eat one right now. Yeah, give me, I'll eat one. Okay. I think I'm going to go crazy. Look at that. <laughs> I like the bird. We, we got about 14 packages. Oh, my gosh. This is, now, I just smell it. Does it smell like, does it have the characteristic Vegemite scent? No, it smells like, um, like, kind of like that fish food smell you get with, with chips. All right. There you go. These are straight, are these shaped like Australia? Yes. That's pretty cool. We don't have any shapes like our country that are food. That's a shame. You know, it's not bad. I think the Vegemite is just, that adds a You can taste the Vegemite in there. But it's 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 not overpowering. This is the most palatable Vegemite I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. I will finish those later. Also, I haven't eaten anything worth a damn in weeks, so, <laughs> so that, that probably. Tastes I could like... go home and just <laughs> squeeze that whole tub of Vegemite in my mouth. Oh yeah, Vegemite. <laughs> okay. Despite the fact that veg is in the title, they can't be healthy, right? No, yeah. Because no. it's it's pure salt. Oh. Um. So this is uh, Arnett's, the original. <laughs> 
Arnott's is a popular <laughs> brand in Australia because they've made almost all the things in this box. Uh, this is the original milk arrowroot biscuit. So um, milk is not something I often have in a biscuit, neither is arrowroot. Um, I thought most biscuits had some milk in them. Let's try one of these. Yeah. Jeez, Louise, let's try half of them because I've split the package. Good open. job, Boat. You want to split this with me or you going to eat nah, the whole thing? I'll eat the whole thing. Hmm. They're crunchy. It's not a whole lot of taste, though. Mm. It's, it's, this has got to be something you dip. In They're literally, something. they have no taste. Yeah. They're tasteless. It's like a coffee. I'm putting in coffee. Hmm. What is arrowroot, Boat? I don't know. Maybe the chat can help us with that. Gary says it's good with butter. I see. Mm. I think it would be good dipped in milk chocolate. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Put, you put a chocolate, put, put these in a chocolate fountain over at the Golden Corral. You're we, in business. We need to bring back fondue. We should have a fondue party. Man, that's a great idea. Schedule that for the Taze Valley Computer Club meeting. Let's have that after the diet's over. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a yeah. big fondue Absolutely. throwdown. Okay. I bet we can get one of those fondue sets cheaper like a Goodwill. Coming up next, we've got the original malt o milk. Okay. okay. Oh boy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we eat those these. whoppers or like that. Let's let's try this out and see how this is. Mm. Okay. Here you go. You got a little. Burn. Is that all there is to it, Duncan? Just put an arrow in the ground and <laughs> whatever comes out of that, that's arrow root. <laughs> all right. These smell like graham crackers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're graham crackers. Mm -hmm. you That's know, ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Get it? The mm -hmm. graham crackers. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I was going to regale you with the tale of how graham crackers got their name, but then I forgot it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. I like oh, the texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time to the next. Eep's favorite. The Tim Tams. Oh, man, those are awful good. The Tim Tams. Yeah. Eep will post about these on social media tonight when she sees that they've arrived. So she, she, you don't have to open those. It's her all-time favorite snack. Yeah. Because I want one real bad. But <laughs> Okay. Then we also have the Mint oh, Slice Family Pack. You're killing me, Graham. Graham is actively working against <laughs> my diet. I know you're a fan of the Mint Slice. Yeah. I, I love those so much. I love them. Okay. They're so good. Another Tim Tam family Oh, pack. man. What's that one? What's that one? Is that the this same one, thing? This one's the original. The best. Those are great. Why yeah. can't we get this stuff over here? I can't figure it Let's out. Slide it back so we can continue to see it. Um, another package of Minties oh, for boy. the kid. Oh, man. God, he's going to be so happy. Has as, as, uh, Eep tried these? You know, I don't know if Eve has tried the minty or you wanna, not. You want to take a package okay, for Eve? Take because you're gonna be taking the majority of this. Out. Okay. I just can't be exposed to it. <laughs> we got two more packages of minty. Oh here. well, there you go. There you. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. Now here is something that's, <laughs> that's wrapped very well. So I know what those are. I property. know what those are. What they're, are these? Those, those are those candy bar things, aren't they? They're really the ones we had before. I don't know. I don't remember I having candy bars last The package looks time. similar. These are, these oh, are no, crunchies. That's not, that's not what I thought it was. Well, open it up. Let's okay. give it a shot. You can split it with me here. Oh, I can't eat all that. I'll quarter it. Oh, shoot. There you go. Thank oh, you. yeah. John Marshall brought these. John Marshall, I think, is in the chat. He brought these. That's where we're from. Yeah, mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, Amigathon. Look. I yeah. will. Oh, I didn't actually show that on the camera. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, this is a um, golden hokey pokey honeycomb covered in Cadbury milk chocolate. I kid you not when I say this. This is the first chocolate I've had since I weighed in. Wow. The very first bit of chocolate I've had. I bet it tastes great, bit. doesn't it? It's real good, yeah. All right. Plenty of crunchies for the world. Okay. We move on. This is a uh, it's a glass glass jar. There's a beer in there. <laughs> beer. This is uh ooh. That's something for those crackers, ooh. right? Australian apricot jam. Mm. 
I bet that's good. Made in Adelaide Hills, South Australia. Now, what makes Australian jam different from, say, American jam? If you have to ask, you'll never get it. Um, this is made from in Australia from at least 99% Australian ingredients. So uh, thank you for the, the jam. Are you a big jam guy? I do like some jam. Yeah. That's why you need to try on those crackers. That's right. Get a little jam That's on right. there. Absolutely. Am I right here, guys? Yeah. Okay. Nope. I just ripped my microphone off. Put that back on. They're just looking at the food. I don't think we've ever seen a show where they open as much food as we do. I know. I know. We're so lucky. And then we eat it. And you're supposed to, the cardinal rule of broadcasting, never eat on the That's air. That's right. And we're making an exception. Here's some more shapes, by the way. Australian shapes, Vegemite, and cheese. You know, a lot of this is going to come with us to the first inaugural meeting of the Taze Valley Computer Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm missing that film. Cadbury Dairy Milk Caramello Koala. Oh, Both those are pieces. great. Yeah. Now, I know Luke loves these, mm -hmm. right? Take he those does. with you. Take those with you. He's a big fan. Okay. Are the crunchies broken, John asks? No. They weren't. They were intact. They were, yeah, yeah, they were intact. But um, but Graham wrapped them very well. He wrapped them in copious amounts of uh, mm -hmm. bubble. Okay. Ha! Pixel, say, Pixel says the Australian Africa jam is 30% kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is... Oh, it's today? It's Australia Day. Did you know that? No. What a day. What a day to open this package mm -hmm. from Graham. Mm -hmm. Happy Australia Day, everyone your favorite, Aaron. It's the Daryl Lee original. Oh my God. The fresh licorice. I'm still working on the other eight packs of this stuff. Well, I hope I, you're, you're going to need to start working on some more packs. Um, the thing is, I, I can eat licorice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, licorice isn't that but bad But one thing I've learned, hey, let's let's have a little inside baseball for you. If you eat it, normally in the old days, I would just eat licorice along with the multitude of crap you shouldn't eat. Now when I eat it, my body's not happy when I do that. <laughs> because you're only eating the licorice, not the multitude of mm -hmm. other stuff. So, keep going. I'm, I'm. And happy birthday to Dan Ross, by the way, who is, uh, it's Dan, it's Australia Day, it's Dan Ross's birthday. It's the greatest day of my life. Dan, dare we ask the age of Dan? Dan, 40th birthday today. Oh, man. 40th. It's all downhill from here, Danny boy. Do you remember the big 40 almost 10 years ago now? I literally wept. And drank. I, that's what I by myself. I see forty rapidly approaching mm -hmm. in my life. So, okay. Now here's one we've never had before. Can I interest you in some cherry ripe? Let's have a piece of that. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, the cherry I like ripe. It. We should have. We're working a little blue here. Yeah, yeah. That's my stage name. You know, when I dance. <laughs> Sorry, delayed me... reaction, man. <laughs> Instead of honey, West cherry ripe, you come out and some kind of twirl and some pasty, <laughs> singing one of your dumb songs. I sing the Patreon names as part of the act. <laughs> wow, where do you? Where does this act perform? Coal Miners Lounge. You're the opening act for the midgets. I was gonna say, yeah. You'll see it. Oh God, this is tremendous. Oh yeah. Here is your winner. It's got a coconut. It's got a cherry. It's got a chocolate. Got everything you need. That's the best. See that any, is the best. See if there's any flavor text on here. Ripe, juicy cherries and coconut. What and tastes old like gold. this? Nothing. Something tastes. No, I've had this. You know what this tastes like? If you took the top part off of one of those uh, tw uh, those Twinkies, you know that. Oh the, yeah. Yeah. And then like put chocolate around mm -hmm. it. That's then you got. Why haven't they done that? Idiots. That's right. This is tremendous. Australia knows what's going on. You know, after not eating anything worth of crap for so long, I mean, I'm literally, I'm like, I'm getting ready to explode. <laughs> I'm going to run around and just go like, ah! <laughs> this is, I hope this doesn't cause you to fall off the wagon. Oh, no. I'm off. The, the way just lost. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if you ate all this? Already? Yeah, I can imagine that right now. <laughs> okay. Trust me, for lunch, I had the same thing I've had for months, <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> One... Ch grilled chicken sandwich, one baked potato. Oh Rinse gosh. and repeat. It's oh like, oh. Gosh. All right. So, a couple more cherry ripes. Give me one of those to take home. Okay. I gotta let Teresa try that. And finally, no, not finally, we have 
Man, that is so good. Australian blood orange marmalade. <laughs> blood what? Blood orange. You said orange. Orange. You said it's it like a I'm hick. from West Virginia. You said it like that's, a hick. That's, I never thought I'd hear you sound like that. Oh, I sound like Blood a orange. <laughs> oh, heck, that's my favorite. <laughs> now we're Texan. Somehow. Everything I know about Texas accents comes from the Pace Picani commercials. That's, that's all you need to know. New York City. <laughs> right. Um, so this is... Um, Discovered the deliciousness of the fresh Australian blood orange. With an intense flavor and aroma, they deliver a delightful kick. You'll keep going back for them. <laughs> the chat room is in good form tonight. <laughs> so, um, Did those screw off backwards? That's a good valid oh, point. Oh, that's true. It is from Australia. Yeah. Is well, that the, That's not true. Everything's no, backwards down there. Left is right. Down is up. <laughs> Green lights are red. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Everything you saw in it's sliders. It's bizarro it's world yeah. down there. Okay. <laughs> and finally, this is something for you. This has the, been this has been more fun than I had any right to be. I'll tell you that right now. This is something for you and the boy right here. Holy smokes! Aussie Scrabble. Good lord! Thank you very much. We should play this. That this should be our next board game. We should just sit there and film That's us true. playing this. The thing is, let's see here. A fairly uh, read this first line and explain what that word is. Okay. A fair dinkum twist. <laughs> On the classic word game, Aussie Scrabble separates the legends from the drongos with new gameplay and a lingo list of slang. Hopefully they have all the different interesting words they use for sex in Australia in this. Um, gather your mates together and give it a burl. I give it a burl quite often. Do you? Yeah. How much does that cost you? Well, you don't want to know. Uh, it's chock full of dead set new gameplay. Explore this sunburnt country. Maybe I should put on the accent. And its colorful oh, characters, God, no. history, and wildlife. Draw special cards when your word crosses a strong space. I sound kind of like, fair go. Use Aussie folklore, traditions, and mythology to outplay those dodgy mates. Add to your score by playing words from our true blue fair dinkum Aussie lingo list. I've got a bunch of dodgy mates. I don't have a... You know what I mean? <laughs> They're the dodgiest. It's very colorful. It I is. I like the box a lot. We should film this sometime. We should play... Are, are you any good at Scrabble? Uh, you know, I, I consider myself to be pretty good at Scrabble. I'm god-awful. And oh, not, and not I what I would... I you to be good at Scrabble. I'm not what I would call a strong speller, by the mm. way. Although these days, I'm like super speller compared to most people. <laughs> well, it's all that, uh, it's all that text-to-speech that you oh, use. Oh, man. Rusty. This was dinner. Got two little crackers here, then I'll be done. That's it. That's my calorie count for the month. <laughs> Whew, thank you, Graham. Look at this ba bounty. <laughs> there it is, Retro Man Cave. Bingo ate my baby. <laughs> Just in time to get that one in. The cave. <laughs> Speaking of cave, the dive caved in. Give me all the food. <laughs> Bring me everything you've got and an after dinner mint <laughs> and a bucket. <laughs> all right. Well, we're out of fun stuff. Um, Gary, however, uh -huh. I guess I, I put it away, but uh, the Amiga 600 and the um, and the ZX Spectrum that you sent us are here in Amiga Studios. As soon as my PAL monitor comes in, oh. um, then I will be exploring the wide variety, the wide world of, uh, of, of those uh, platforms, doing some, some good stuff. So, um, yeah. That was great. That was great. Graham, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much Graham. For... Thank you, Tina. You've made my um, you've made my diet much more difficult tonight. <laughs> Thank you for um, <laughs> you know we we will repay the favor. Um, and uh, yep, and, we're we're gonna team it up. I've yeah. got I've got you got a bunch of stuff in over there. So. Yeah. Oh so, gosh. All right. Um, I'm having such a sugar oh, rush. Oh, Edvin, I was unable because I was carry on only, uh, and I didn't think about this until it was too late. I was carry on only, so I could not bring the beer through airport security. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Edvin gave me some Swiss beer, which is apparently one of the worst beers in the world. Really? It's the, not Swiss, sorry, Swedish. Uh-huh. Oh, um, right, because you just you killed a joke I was going to make right oh, there. I'm sorry. Because the problem with Swiss beer, you know what that is. It's full of holes. That's it. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, it all leaks out, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe sorry about that. Next maybe it's time, better you killed that one. Is it Norwegian beer? I thought it was Sw I thought it was Swedish beer. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, I, I, I get nothing right. I got... I, you got you got that though. That's true. I did get you the Ryan's. That added to my sugar intake. Yeah, this everything thing is here so is like sweet. It, it's so sweet. It's like drinking something you put out for a hummingbird. Yeah, you know? it is. That's what I like to drink. Oh man, thanks guys. Appreciate it very much. Well, you can uh, 
What are you going to do with this kookaburra? Oh, I thought you were going to give that to Eve. Oh, yeah, I was going to give that to Eve. You're right. I wonder what she'll do with it. She'll wear it on your head. All right, guys. I think we're going to close it on down. <laughs> I didn't silly. know we were still taping. <laughs> we were taping that? Are you kidding me? Uh, thanks, thanks, Graham. Thanks, Retro Man Cave. Ricky DeRocher, Henrik, Edvin, Dan, um, everybody else, Pixels, everybody else is still in chat. Tina is chuffed that you like the Scrabble game. Oh, yeah. We're, we should play that. You, me, and Brent, throw down. I want to play it with Luke. You know, actually, you know I do what? want to he talk to you about stuff. something. Oh, okay. So you, you had the gall to go on to Discord and say, yeah. I'm thinking about making some D&D &D content. Yeah. When the Discord folks have been clamoring for years for you to run some modules with them. And you're rubbing it in their face. Yeah, I'll make some movies about my favorite modules, but will I ever lead you through my magical world? No. Let me let me ask you a question, if I may. Who appears weekly on this show with a big, huge wad of research? Who is that? That's you. Okay. Who appears weekly on the other show with a big, huge wad of research? That's Brent. No, it ain't. It's me. I always just assumed you read it and Brent wrote it. No. Are you kidding me? First of all, Brent can't write. <laughs> and secondly, no. Okay, so I'm double dipping here. Plus, I got a kid, a chick, and a job where I drive 80 miles round trip every day. It is difficult for me to add other things to my docket. That much said... This is the Amigo Aaron Challenge 2 right here. Oh, I'm boy. Like oh, boy. When a sucker wants to get something together where we could all meet at the same time online and get it going, I'm ready to go. I'll be your huckleberry. You just you set everything up and I'll run a show. How's that? There we go. That's all I wanted to hear. That's all you got. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Adios. Adios. Thanks, Graham. <laughs>